Allow me to introduce you to our next speaker. It's Ray Shorrox, Executive Chair of Orteco Minerals. Over to you, Ray. Thank you very much. Let me share the screen with you. I'm sure you can see that now. So welcome everyone. I'm glad I could be here today. And I hope you enjoy this uh, presentation. I have for all those people at the Noosa Conference this great slide for you. This is Pickle Crow as it stands today. The shot of the, uh, the snow covering the ground. So the temperature are much different there than where you are, no doubt. Um, this is a really good slide to open up with because this shows you the Pickle Crow Camp the Pickle Crow Camp. What you can see here for my point is pointing for that for you is we've just installed this 24 man camp. Here's the core stack, core sheds here, generators here, this road sealed, beautifully hard. And over here is the old, one of the old shafts. If you keep going up the road at the back there, you can't quite see it hidden behind the trees is the mill, the old uh, head frame, and shaft number one, which I'll show you later on. So it gives you a good indication of what we're dealing with here. Here's the obligatory cautionary statements. I'll let you read those at your leisure. So just by introduction and give you a summary before we get into the guts of this is what we've done since we bought this project in January uh, this year, we've uh, produced, uh, increased our resource uh, from zero to 830,000 ounces. And recently in uh, September, we increased that by a further 170,000 ounces to 1 million ounces at a very healthy grade of 11.3. Um, one of the great things we're witnessing at the moment, we have multiple high grade loads uh, discovered which are outside this resource. And we expect to see that come into a resource in the first half of next year. Mineralization all runs from surface and in open in all directions. We have two rigs drilling at the moment, uh, doing double shifts. And that infamous third rig uh, is going to be with us next week, I'm pleased to announce. Uh, results from the ongoing drilling are expected to continue over the, the fourth quarter and into this first quarter of 2021, which we had some results which we announced in the last couple of days of up to 17 grams per tonne resource, which is highlighting this scope for more resource growth. But I'll run you through some of those numbers when we get closer to describing the geological areas in which we are. Mineralization is always open, a long strike and at depth and multiple loads for resource. Um, you will see those new loads discovered in vein 13 area, which I'll show you. Uh, the maiden drilling campaign, as we've discussed before and highlighted, is gone from 10,000 metres to 45,000 metres. Currently, we've completed 13,000 metres of drilling for 58 holes. Importantly, when we picked up this project, you'll note that we got a granted mining licence to May 2067, long after I'm not on this earth. So it goes for a long time. We expect to see great things in that time. We also have excellent infrastructure associated with this acquisition and a healthy balance sheet which I'll take you through. All of which says that we have, while we have a great asset, <clears throat> it's only people that make those assets work. And I've said this time and again, um, and for those that don't know, I'm the founding chairman of Bellevue Gold, uh, which is now a $1.2 billion company. And we took that over um, four or five years ago. And uh, I employed uh, Steve Parsons, who's the current managing director. And I'm lucky to have him on my board of Orteco as a non-executive, along with Mike Naylor, who's an executive, uh, sorry, an executive and a board member on Bellevue, and Chief Geologist Steve Brooks as my technical director. And I have Chief Geologist Marcus Harden, uh, who has a, at least half a dozen discoveries under his belt, many of which have led to them going into production. I'm glad to say and it's very important to know that this team will take us to something quite grand, I believe. Uh, the, the obligatory corporate summary, but there's three great takeaways from this particular slide. And that is at a market cap of uh, 157 million at 10 cents, which I believe it was yesterday, 
Um, that gives me an enterprise value of a 125 million or thereabouts, which is incredibly unchallenging when you consider that we have a million ounces chalk resource at 11.3 grams. The second takeaway from this slide is board and management own 31%. Every one of those shares have been bought by that team you just saw and all our employees, not a share given, all, all purchased on market and alongside investors in, in, um, in uh, placements. And uh, that's real skin in the game for a lot of those people. Uh, and the third thing that I want you to take away from this slide is that we've gone from a zero institutional base to almost a quarter of our register being owned by institutions globally. You can see there, Onion32 is the major investor, but we also have uh, uh, North American investors, European investors, and uh, about a dozen Aussie investors uh, complementing our register. So this is where we are. This is the infrastructure we picked up. Um, so it is a short flight from Toronto to Thunder Bay, you can see there. Daily flights to Pickle Lake uh, Airport and a 10 minute drive to that photograph you can see on your left hand side, which is our heated core shed. Uh, what we also purchased and you saw in that very first slide I put up is hydropower, sealed roads throughout the project. Those daily flights I mentioned, on-site exploration infrastructure, camps, core shed, existing mill, too small for our purposes, but it is there still. 600 kilowatt generation power, all year round exploration. Right now, the, 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 the ground is getting harder and harder, which makes it better for the drilling contractors. It's just a matter of uh, grading out the snow when it comes. Most importantly though, what we've managed to do here is combine all of those disparate elements, which were this area uh, into 320 square kilometers of land holding, which is all under the one corporate un umbrella. So it's all under the Orteco umbrella. Very important to remember. And I just remind you, we have an active mining license to uh, 2067 and we're ready to go. Press the button. Here's the district. This is where we are. Tier one location. Uh, our neighbors are Newmont, Springpole, the first mining group, Evolution's Red Lake, West Red Lake Golds, West Red Lake, the Marsden project owned by Pure Gold, um, the Dixie project. While it doesn't have a resource, it's had some spectacular intercepts of late. Uh, and then of course you can see where we are at Pickle Lake and that huge land holding that we have in a very prospective area. Very exciting uh, uh, spot that we find ourselves. Moving on, this is what it's all about. This is where this first million ounces has been discovered. And it's also where the first one and a half million ounces at 16 grams per ton were produced. It's a 3.8 kilometer strike. And as you can see, the focus at this point of time has been very much on vein 13, vein 22 and vein nine. What's important here is to remember that we've got a three pronged approach to this particular asset in this area. One is that we want to bring those identified zones of mineralization into jork resource compliance. And then we do that by adding geological confidence and drill density. For example, vein 22, as I mentioned, 13 and nine, shown in those yellow boxes that you can see there, okay? The second prong to that approach is to extend those known resources along strike. So that's vein five and 11, 13 and 19 shown at the bottom of that picture there, um, which will extend high grade resources by a 250 meter strike, uh, which is very exciting. And then furthermore, uh, the third prong to that approach in this area is discovery, new discoveries, new target areas for future growth. And what we discovered yesterday, but one is in, around that uh, vein 13 area, you can see there, very close to shaft three, uh, we uh, had results of up to 70 grams per ton. Uh, we got 18 meters at 2.75 grams per ton, 1.5 meters at 23, 1.5 meters at 17, and 1.5 meters at 12. So you can see that we continue to hit good discovery, high mineralization. And I want you to remember that this is along these three shafts here, shaft one, shaft three, 
and the Albany shaft. And I'll now show you what this looks like in long section. So you can see that this vein one, which is a highly productive, where they, where they uh, originally got some uh, 36,000 ounces out of this uh, one vein at a staggering 24 grams per tonne. But what you'll note here is there's 38 kilometers of infrastructure here, uh, which in today's value would be in the, in the order of two or $300 million. Our focus here though, however, is to drill and discover around. So you would have noticed that that vein 13, that we've got some new discoveries around this shaft three. Uh, you can see that was drilled down to 700 meters, shaft one to a thousand meters, and the Albany shaft to about 220. Our focus is to drill in, to drill and further extend these resources in this top 500 meters, and in particular, the top 300 meters. The idea here is to try to move towards and a target towards 2 million ounces, which uh, is not too challenging given we've already discovered in our first little while of drilling from May, 1 million ounces. So that's the objective here, is to attack that particular area here. The second objective is to go from there, this blue area you can see here that I show with my pointer, to get that area and there, and then do and look at the brownfields targets that are around here. I just draw your attention to the fact that when we purchased this project, what we got was 170 kilometers of drill core and some of the most spectacular stuff that we've seen. And that's why this is so exciting. So we have two rigs drilling, double shifts in this blue area here on this slide. And when this third rig arrives, it will be to look at this brown fields, 250 meter to 500 meter step outs. And I draw your attention to the Springer shaft, which is just down to the south of that, that area that where our inferred resource is, where we, they produce 13,000 ounces at uh, 24 grams per tonne. They also, if you can see, untapped, unchallenged, unmined, uh, 1.7 meters at 36, and almost a meter at 69 grams per tonne. And we'll follow up all of those targets in due course once that uh, once that rig arrives. But I will draw your attention also to this Cohen MacArthur shear here, which is showing great prospectivity, and we would expect that we'll throw some holes down there and further define what we have in this area. But as I say, the Springer shaft, some great stuff of 1.7 meters at 36, the F vein 46, uh, 4.6 meters at 9.3 grams per ton, the powerhouse, all within, you know, within 35 meters of surface, incredibly shallow. You know, if, if I was around at the day that they closed these down, I would have taken a shovel out there myself and dug that low. So really, really interesting stuff, easily to get to, numerous walk-up targets, and a third rig arriving on site very shortly. The next thing we want to do is to take, go from that, that, that uh, resource area outlined in blue that I showed you, to move to those brownfields as the second stage. And then we want to move to these regional targets. These regional targets, um, uh, what, what's so exciting about this project? You notice here down here where the Pickle Crow project is, where 1.5 million ounces was produced, and we've further enhanced our resource to 1 million ounces in that gray area. You can see the Patricia mine that I showed you on the previous slide. And you can see just here is the Springer shaft just here. So what we will be doing here is to take some great advantages of some of the intercepts that previous owners have put down and never bothered to, to take any further, never to explore any further, never to put any more drill core down. Um, but this you'll notice here on the Tarp Lake shear, more than 14 kilometers of zone, shear zone. 1.8 metres at 66, 4.8 metres at 7.2, 36 at 1.5. And also in the core mine shear, we've got drill intersections, which is the Springer shaft that I mentioned to you before, 1.7 at 36, the F vein 4.6 at 9, and Powderhouse at 6 metres at 7. So you can see here that there's a lot of prospectivity. And when we have contracted uh, the fourth rig, and that when that fourth rig arrives, and I'm not going to put a date to that, but it is contracted, whether it gets to site 
that's what its job will be, is to try and get towards that uh, area and drill out some of that regional area. Notwithstanding the fact that the focus will be in that area that I mentioned to you before, which is in that inferred resource area. So that is the main game right there, is to increase the resource there uh, in that blue area, to step out from there 250 metres into this slide, which is the brownfields area where you can see we have multiple walk-up targets and then throw in a fourth rig and look at some of these areas in the regional. So that'll build our exploration pipeline quite nicely coming from coming over the next little while. So in summary, we've executed the agreement with First Mining to earn up to 80% of the Pickle Crow project in Ontario, Canada. We've got an independent jaw conferred resource of 1 million ounces at 11.3 grams per tonne. Uh, this area has historically produced 1.5 million ounces at 16 grams per, per, per tonne before my enclosure in 66. And I'll remind you, it didn't run out of mineralization. It stopped in 66 due to the gold price dropping to $35 US an ounce. And then this area is so developed that we have a, an active mining license at least till 2067. All puts us in great stead to develop up this resource and then move towards development in a couple of years' time. Now, this is an underexplored large land holding, as I've tried to explain throughout this presentation with numerous walk-up targets. I've got a 45,000 metre drill campaign. I'm 13,000 metres through that campaign. And you'll see results coming through over the next well, the rest of this quarter, the next quarter, and certainly the first half of 2021. Uh, we expect the third rig to arrive shortly. We've got a highly experienced board, as I mentioned to you before, uh, that provide you with a lot of comfort that we know what we're doing here. We've got a proven track record of success, and uh, we need term on the ground exploration. In the next two quarters, we will be showing you, and in the first half of 2021, a resource update. And thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Ray.